All right, I wanna do this video quickly to go over that age old question, do pitchers drive? Uh, there's a school of thought that believes pitchers don't drive. It's probably also around a lot of the old stand tall and fall approaches. You know, I guess if I think of one, Sandy Kopex was, was that guy with aggressively hip lead and would just kind of collapse the back leg. And then there became this, this big movement that pitchers don't drive. <clears throat> I wanna look at that. Is, is that true? And then there's that other camp, more than likely what we represent here at 3X Pitching, that pitchers do drive. You know, and we, we have the research though, that's third party, not my research. We have three case studies that say there's a correlation to back leg drive, to linear wrist energy, or one of them to ball velocity. And then there's a bunch of case studies to the front leg drive to, to ball velocity. That, I, um, I'm not gonna address the front leg here. I'm purely gonna address the back leg to understand um, what is going off in the back leg? Is there a drive or not? So this really isn't to be seen as a case study, but just to kind of learn using force plates of what's going on uh, and basically seeing it through the eyes of our perspective. So we have two force plates. This is going to help us understand uh, action and reaction, right? Newton's third law. Wherever there's an action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, force goes down, then an equal and opposite force will come up. In, with these force plates, it actually measures it in Newtons, uh, more than likely because of Newton, Newtonian physics. But you, we're gonna learn, when we step on the plate, we, we apply a force like we do when we stand up, and an equal force comes back, and that creates a state of equilibrium, where there's two opposite opposing forces that creates a static position. They, hold, they pretty much hold each other up. So if I was able to push more force in the ground, I'd start to rise, where if I push less force in the ground, I would start to fall to the point where I'd eventually hit the earth and then I'd back, be back to that state of equilibrium. But we're gonna then take in other drive leg styles. We're gonna look at a collapsing back leg, a rotating back leg, a knee slamming back leg, and a triple extending back leg to understand, is there a drive? Well, just based on physics, well, like I said, there's a state of equilibrium, two opposing forces. So technically there is a force always going down. So technically you can say, of course, everyone drives because there's always force going in the ground. If not, it'd be falling. But I guess they would say that their, their perspective is, do we add force? Do we increase that, that state of equilibrium as we move to front foot strike? So that's what we're really gonna look at. It's not really a question anymore of, do we drive? It's how much do we add to our drive or to our, our force production as we move down the map? So, we're gonna start off and just kind of look at how the force plates work. So we'll hit record. It's gonna start off at zero, and then I'm gonna step on. You'll see the force go up, and as I balance, you can see I eventually come, I find this, this, this state of equilibrium where everything levels out, and that's around 950 to 1,000 Newtons. That's something around 215, 200 plus pounds. It's funny, I did this before lunch, it was less. It's because of everything I ate, it's gone. <laughs> I was like, why is it gone up? All right, so now we're gonna look at the collapsing back leg. We're gonna get on, I'm gonna lift, I'm gonna lead to the hip and just fall to front foot and then throw. If you do this without throwing, you're gonna get different results. At the end of the day, all this is how, is, is how it influenced the throw. And it's gonna change because you still have to do all the other biomechanic things to get the ball moving. So I'm gonna make sure every one of these I'm throwing the ball. So here we go, we're gonna test out the collapsing back leg. We're gonna look for any added force production or any drive. You ready? Okay. Step on. I'm gonna let it settle and get to that state of equilibrium. Okay. I'm gonna fall and throw. Okay. And if I look at it, this one actually did better than last time. If I look at it, that one looked like it stayed the same. So you can see it stayed pretty much around that state of equilibrium. So I was able not to put any force on that throw. Now we're gonna try rotation. So rotation would be like squishing the butt. As far as collapsers, I mean, you could say Sandy Koufax, but I would argue if he actually completely kept the leg dead and didn't push. A rotator, you could say someone like Marcus Stroman, but you still gotta look at his front leg. He's a tremendous front leg driver, that's where he gets it. But let's look at the back leg. Is he actually driving off the back leg? We'll take a look. Okay, we'll, we'll start the force plates. I'll step on, and I'm going to just rotate and throw. I'm in a state of equilibrium. I'm gonna rotate and throw. 
And you could see in the in the effort, in the effort to to spin my leg as I move forward, it generated a force production of up to what is that like 1,300 newtons? It looks like almost 1,300 newtons. So I added about 50 pounds. So if uh, 1,000 newtons around 220 or something like that, pounds of force, that probably went up to 255. So maybe I added less, that may be less. That might be 30 pounds. So there was an added force. Even in rotation, I had an added force. There was technically a drive in rotation. Let's try knee slamming. What is knee slamming? As I move forward through my hip, I hold my leg in abduction and I work to aggressively drive into adduction without engaging the lower leg. What is abduction to adduction range of motion or that velocity helps drive hip rotation or actually drives force into front foot. And ultimately we should see force production coming out of back foot. So let's give this a try. This would be a knee slammer. So it's set, we're going to step on until it goes to the state of equilibrium. And I'm going to work to abduct, adduct into knee slamming. Okay. We see here it went from 1,000 newtons to 1,100. I actually didn't push as much force than rotation. Think about it. I was pushing through my knee and collapsing my leg, similar to collapsing, but the force came through the drive through my knee. In rotating to spin, I almost had to push down, which you'll see rotators when they land, they're still on the rubber, which means to push them to front foot, there is more than likely, as we're seeing here, a drive or added force production. But we also have it for knee slamming. Let's do the last one, triple extension, which ultimately, is the maximum or optimal leg drive where uh, more than likely we're going to get optimal force production. So let's give it a try. So click the plate, it's set. I'm going to step on until it goes to that state of equilibrium. Then I'm going to load and triple extend. Okay. So from here I went from equal to a thousand to thirteen hundred that was the most so there you go 300 newtons were pushed out of that back a leg through triple extension so we're I was able to shut down force production in a collapsing back leg in rotation I added about um, actually what was it 200 newtons and then in knee slamming, I actually like 1150, and then in triple extension, 300. So you would most technically, or the more accurate um, definition, or you know, answer to the question, do we do pitchers drive? Would be all pitchers drive except pitchers that are completely collapsing their back leg. There's a there's a there's a drive going off in pretty much every movement that isn't purely a fall to front foot. So rotation isn't purely a fall. Knee slamming isn't purely a fall. Obviously triple extension is purely a fall. So it's incorrect to say if a pitcher is doing, you know, each, either one of those, rotating, knee slamming, or triple extending, or versions of them, hybrids of them, that they are driving, um, specifically if they're throwing hard. So think about it. I'm probably throwing 75 in these throws. If someone's throwing 100, that force production potentially will be a lot greater and this will make uh, even more sense uh, if we had one of those elite pitchers on the mound. So I hope this kind of clears up the old conventional wisdom that pitchers don't drive. They do drive. It's how much do they drive and you can see the ultimate drive, uh, the most energy of drive would be triple extension.